Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, people are heading out to an Eastern Kentucky staple. The 67th annual Polk Salad Festival is underway in downtown Harlan. WYMT's Dakota Makris is live with more on day two. Dakota. Hey, good, uh, good afternoon, Steve. Yeah, so the festival kicked off last evening, and it seems like a lot of people were ready to get out and see what the festival had to offer. Harlan County Judge Executive Dan Mosley tells me they had a great turnout last night, and well, today it's the same. A jam-packed day with vendors and rides to entertain everyone in your family, and Thursday night's weather was just what our forecasters ordered. We had a, a wonderful crowd. Got very fortunate that there wasn't any severe weather. Uh, it kind of dissipated as it got here, so uh, very thankful for that. Harlan County Judge Executive Dan Mosley says they have 100 vendors scattered nearby and inside of the Harlan Center. He tells me more than 65% of them are from Harlan County. That's a good sign because that means that the money spent at the festival, a lot of it stays here. Ashley Bledsoe with Taco Holler says it is her fourth year setting up at the festival. We love serving our community. We keep our prices low because everybody should be able to come to the Polk Salad Festival and enjoy a healthy meal. Serving delicious food, they cooked 90 pounds of chicken and 200 ears of corn on the cob last year and are hoping to do that or even more this year. She says they had a huge lunch rush Thursday and so far business is steady. It's hit and miss. We do have some call-in orders that we fill, so it does keep us busy, even though we may not have a line. We still have things going on inside the trailer. And Steve, I think Big Blue Nation will love this news. Quarterback Will Levis will be here tonight at the Harlan Center signing autographs from 6 to 8 p.m. And the judge executive tells me people can bring an item for him to sign. Live at the Polk Salad Festival, I'm Dakota Makris, WYMT Mountain News. Now, Dakota, I know you tried Polk Salad earlier on Facebook. How was it? I, you know, uh, it was all right. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I kind of thought it would taste more like spinach, and it really didn't, but I would, 10 out of 10, would eat it again. All right. Dakota, thank you. Well, we'll check back in with Dakota a little bit later. Now, on Saturday, offensive lineman Tashawn Manning will also sign autographs at the Harlan Center from 2 until 4, but as Dakota mentioned, Will Levis is there a little bit later this evening, tonight. Well, the KHSAA softball tournament got started this morning in Lexington. Corbin fans filed in to see their Red Hounds take the field against Louisville Holy Cross. Unfortunately, the team will be going home early after losing eight to nothing. However, Eastern Kentucky still has some teams in the running. The action continues tomorrow at 11 a.m. with Johnson Central taking on Louisville Ballard. That's followed by Estill County facing Davis County. Now, again, this is softball. We'll have highlights of Corbin and Holy Cross tonight in sports. <laughs> Well, you've seen it behind Dakota just a few minutes ago. It's an absolutely gorgeous day here in downtown Harlan for the Polk Salad Festival 67th annual, and they couldn't have asked for better weather. You heard Judge Executive Dan Mosley talking about how we escaped any severe weather yesterday, and that has resulted in a beautiful day today, not just here in Harlan, but around the region as well. We take you out to our camera at London Corbin Airport, just out to our west and northwest this afternoon. Upper 70s there with a few fair weather puffy clouds moving through at the at this hour an absolutely gorgeous day out to our east and northeast at uva wise from our high knob camera there even nicer our usual cool spot coming in at 70 degrees around the region it remains upper 70s middle to upper 70s around the region even a few of us getting near 80 79 jonesville middlesboro and jacksboro and monticello hitting the 80 degree mark. So it has been a beautiful day out here today. We had some clouds earlier. What's making it beautiful, those dew points are in the upper, the middle and upper 50s, which means we're actually talking about low humidity around the region, which makes that 78 feel a whole lot better than if we were dealing with any of those uh, higher dew point values pinpoint doppler it's just a few or just a little bit of clutter it's all a clean sweep out there this evening we'll continue to see that as we run through the remainder of the evening so keep that wymt weather app handy you scroll through the forecast you'll see we're in the 70s falling into the 60s eventually 
into the 50s around the mountains. I'll have the latest on if this beautiful weather looks to stick around into the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. Two people are dead after a crash in Perry County this afternoon. Perry County Deputy Coroner Jeff Combs tells us the crash happened around noon on Highway 1096, also known as Big Creek Road near Wolf Branch Road. After the driver seemingly lost control of their vehicle, went over a guardrail and hit a tree. Both the driver and passenger were killed. We do not know their identities at this time. We'll of course update this story as we learn more later tonight and on WYMT.com. Around the world today marks 100 days since Russia began its invasion of Ukraine. Although the Kremlin's army once outspent its neighbors by a roughly 10 to 1 margin, Ukraine is holding on. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky thanked the U.S. yesterday for sending high-mobility artillery rocket systems to his country, saying they will, quote, help save the lives of our people and protect our land. In addition to weaponry, the Biden administration also announced another round of sanctions against many officials close to President Vladimir Putin. The cumulative toll of uh, every measure we have put in place uh, has been extraordinarily uh, biting on the Russian economy. Our goal in all of this is to do everything we can to bring this war to an end, uh, to diminish the violence uh, and to put an end uh, to a conflict that was needless to begin with. The White House released a statement saying these sanctions are designed to, quote, enhance enforcement and increase pressure on Putin and his enablers. Earlier this week, leaders in the EU agreed to place a ban on most oil imports from Russia as part of a sanctions package. The World Health Organization says 100 days of war has put Ukraine's health system under severe pressure, sharply increasing the need for health care services while reducing their resources and ability to provide. The WHO has established hubs in areas close to the conflict to rapidly reach the areas of greatest need while working with Olena Zelensky, the first lady of Ukraine, to develop a nationwide mental health program. However, they say things are still getting worse and have issued an appeal for $147.5 million to help keep services operational. The U.S. military has conducted cyber operations in support of Ukraine as it defends itself against Russia's invasion. The head of Cyber Command, the U.S. military's hacking unit, confirmed the news in a published interview. It's a rare public acknowledgement. Hacking operations are often shrouded in mystery. They are not revealing when the operations began or what they entail. Officials have long warned that Russia may launch cyber attacks against the U.S. in retaliation for sweeping sanctions on the Kremlin over its war in Ukraine. Well, this continued conflict is partially contributing to high gas prices, which are turning into major speed bumps for Americans who plan to travel this summer. The nation's average price for a gallon of regular this morning was $4.76, another new record. CBS's Chris Van Cleve talked to one driver about the high cost of going on a trip. Pain at the pump is written all over Debbie Carl's face. Looks like you did uh, almost $100 this time. It's awful. It's awful. Yeah, I, I'm thinking this is the second time we fueled up. The first time was $75. So we're going to spend like probably six or $800 in gas. She her daughters and grandkids are driving 650 miles each way for a long weekend of camping. Are the gas prices ever going to go down, or do you think this is... I hope so. But don't expect it to get better anytime soon, says Gas Buddies' Patrick DeHaan. This may be the low point for the summer in what could become certainly a very expensive summer to fill your tank. Demand for oil is outpacing supply. <laughs> the war in Ukraine means millions of barrels a day of Russian oil stay off the market. U.S. and OPEC are increasing oil production, but it's still below pre-pandemic levels. Capacity at U.S. refineries that turn crude oil into gasoline also remains below 2019 output. While demand may peak midsummer, that's right when hurricane season ramps up. Will we see a hurricane disrupt refining? If we do, that could prolong how long it will take to see a reprieve in prices. We're simply biding time until the next major headline. A year ago, it would have cost about 50 bucks to fill up this SUV. Now, 
$78. That is pain at the pump. Some relief may come in the fall, but for now, prices are only likely to rise. Debbie Carl says even if it costs her more to get there, she can't put a price on family time. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Daytona Beach, Florida. Dwindling Social Security payments could be less than 15 years away. In their annual report, Social Security and Medicare trustees said Americans will stop getting full Social Security benefits in about 13 years if Congress does not act. The combined Social Security trust funds, which help support payouts for the elderly and disabled, are projected to run dry in 2035. Let's head over to Wall Street now in the, on this Friday. The Dow closes down today more than 348 points to end the work week. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. But straight ahead here on First at Four, National Cancer Survivors Day is this weekend, and advocates want to spread the word to millions of patients on all the available resources. And it's been a beautiful afternoon here in downtown Harlan. Will it continue into the weekend? Find out the details next.